Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the most anticipated and most dreaded race of the season here in the Coleslaw Cup, the Midnight Monaco Grand Prix. Now, 19 corners make up this tight and tricky 3.3-kilometer street circuit that stretches the almost the entire country. And with only one DRS zone, qualifying will mean everything. And not only that, weather for today's race, 60% chance of rain, with most likely the intermediates off the star. So... Uh, as we've already said, this qualifying session is going to mean absolutely everything. Only five rounds left of the season, including this one. 14 round season, this being round 10. This one should be uh, a very interesting one. And as we said, qualifying is going to mean everything. El Majaco uh, really is on the, on the cusp of winning a championship. If it's not this week, it's next week for sure. Uh, but he's going to need a good qualifying session. Uh, and he hasn't qualified on pole in just a little while, so we'll have to see. Uh, what route this qualifying session takes. Initially, I can't tell if this would be weather for the intermediates or the full wets. Uh, it does look like intermediates it will be. However, I'm sure uh, out there on the track is much different. Uh, 10 seconds to go now before we start our formation lap. This one will be absolutely crucial here tonight. Uh, mind you, Jacko does have a 51-point lead over Scornzi in the Drivers' Championship so far, but Scornzi starting fourth, Jacko starting ninth. This one could be a huge uh, turntable moment here in the driver sta standings as we look at our, uh, as we go on our formation lap here. So those intermediate tires will last you uh, between 20 and 30 laps. Now the lap, uh, the race being 39 laps long. So it should be uh, a very interesting one. Now I don't believe that we will be having the uh, intermediates out for very long here, only 60%. And it looks like it was going to uh, eventually uh, curb off around that uh, tenth lap mark or so. We are definitely starting on the intermediates, as you can see. I'm not sure how long we'll stay on the intermediates. But as we were saying, Scornzi starting fourth. Uh, he's got himself a pretty good go at the. Uh, he's got himself a pretty good go at the lead here. Uh, albeit he is starting fourth, but that is not that bad. Crucially, El Majaco starting ninth uh, on a track where the further towards the middle you are, the more stressful it is uh, as a driver and. Crucially, you're in the rain as well. As you can see, Alma Jacko, I believe, almost hit the wall there on the formation lap. You can definitely see the drivers doing everything they can to try to find uh, some form of grip around the circuit as we are at Midnight Monaco as well, uh, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, this one, I tell you what, might just be a safety car fest. However, I'm sure it's going to be very exciting. The rain never hurt anything. Well, speaking of uh, things being hurt, A-Dub actually did not get an opportunity to put in a timed lap in qualifying. He is starting P20, uh, not what the Alpha Tauri team needs. As we see Lightwork making his way back to the line now, let's take a quick look at the drivers constructor standing. So currently, Jacko first in drivers, 184 to Scornsey's 133, back to then Dusty Lusky's 128. Now the top three in constructors we're looking at currently, uh, we have Ferrari on top, 227 to Scuderia Alpha Tauri's 207, and then third, uh, Mercedes is 151. So really it is Ferrari versus Alpha Tauri atop the standings uh, in the constructors, and it is Scornzi on Majaco uh, in the drivers. And this one is going to be so crucial to the standings here tonight. We have four rounds left after this in the Coleslaw Cup season, and it, really towards the business end of it now, and we have Monaco in the wet at night. Really, this is the perfect combination for something to go unbelievably exciting here tonight. As the lights will be turning on quite shortly, I think. Can't quite tell. We have four and then five. And it. <laughs> and they're off. And it looks like perhaps Lightwork did get the best start down to the inside. Scornzi trying to make the move around the Mercedes of Dusty Lusky in third as they head into Sandovat. It looks like uh, Lightwork's gotten away then from Jonathan Dunk. Scornzi may have been put in the wall uh, as he was side by side then with Dusty Lusky. Nobody's actually been able to take advantage there. Every, everybody clean through Sandovat currently. But here's Mo Powell Cowboy. Uh, he's looking down the inside then of KB07. KB way out wide as they head through uh, as they head through Massonet and through Casino side by side between the Ferrari and the Alpha Terry. It looks like at the top of the table, it looks like uh, Lightworks had somewhat of a mistake now, and Jonathan Dunk has taken the lead of the Grand Prix as they head down into the hairpin. Let's see if anybody's bo uh, bold enough to make a move here. Speaking of making a move, it's Mopal Cowboy down to the inside then on KB07. Three wide nearly there towards the back for a minute between Slayer Ice Tweezer and Dutchman, and it looks like that has sorted itself out nicely. El Majaco, he's up one spot, started ninth up to eighth, and it looks like everybody for now has gotten away quite all right, but uh, Jonathan Dunk does 
does have the lead of the Grand Prix after light work. Uh, he made somewhat of a mistake. I'm not even sure what it was. We were away. We were watching uh, the AlphaTauri Mopal Cowboy and uh, KBO7 battle it, battle it out, and suddenly light work down to second. Uh, Dusty Lusky has retained third. Scornzy has stayed fourth. Uh, but Scornzy has definitely given Dusty a run for his money here, and I don't think he's done quite yet, as we're only finishing up the first lap of the Grand Prix. Crucially, El Majaco, he's only made up one spot here. Uh, if we look and see who's made up, what position is now in, comes Mo Power Cowboy into the pits. That's quite interesting. This, has he made, uh, I, I mean, I'm we're going to have to assume that is a wing change here for the Alpha Tauri. I'm not even quite sure where he's hit, though, as in comes Shariah Kosla as well. He's doing the same. So it looks like four drivers pitting, Mo Power, Shariah, uh, I believe Smith, Pell, and TDB Dutchman all pitting for wing changes. It looks like the field is starting to spread themselves out here a little bit. Scornsy though, however, still within four tenths uh, on the Mercedes for third place. And Scornsy needs himself a podium finish here to really get even closer to Jacko in the standings. He's got plenty of time to still perhaps claw his way back to a championship battle when they get to Spa. However, he really needs to turn up the juice and see what shakes loose here. And Monaco is not exactly a track where you can do that. Seven tenths of a second separate himself and Dusty Lusky. Now Dusty uh, had himself a great getaway and is currently kept third. Uh, and it looks like light work. I I'm still trying to piece together what perhaps has happened to him. As you can see, he's just hit the wall then going through to the back. Perhaps as he's struggling with understeer. Let's see. Yeah, you can see he's really trying to take it slow through the circuit. He doesn't quite seem happy with his car than the Aston Martin, which puzzles me because he looks so dominant in the qualifying session. Maybe just the conditions aren't right for him, and he's having to adapt, and it's not gone too kindly for him, as Stormzy and uh, Dusty Lusky casually uh, murder about everyone standing on the pit wall then uh, with their little pit boards. Uh, they just hang outside the, onto the track. Yeah, because that makes sense. KB07, he's uh, trying to hunt down the Aston Martin of Lancey here. Looks like Adub and Tweezer having a battle, perhaps. Now, it looks like Adub may have spun the tires. Uh, Tweezer's done that as well, as, as uh, I'm actually not even sure where that overtake's been made. Someone's made a mistake there. Uh, unnatural. KB07, he's trying to work on the Aston Martin ahead of him. He's got his teammate El Majaco in pursuit as well as they head down into the hairpin. I'd be quite interested to see if anyone can make something happen here. Jonathan Dunk has pulled out to a three-second lead over Lightwork currently. Lightwork's pulled out to a two-second lead over Dusty Lusky, and Dusty still under pressure from the house of Scornzy. Now, this is another interesting uh, aspect here. El Majaco and his teammate of KB07. We saw them battle quite a lot uh, at Imola. Do they battle it out here in Monaco? Uh, this is not exactly the track to go battling with anyone, not uh, let alone a teammate. However, I don't necessarily think these guys are afraid to mix it up with each other. We'll have to wait and see what happens as uh, KB07, I mean, both drivers really trying to prove to the other that they do have some pace. Now, we know Jacko's got some pace. KB07, uh, at least in my eyes, still relatively new. I don't know all everything about him as KB07 uh, really does beautifully hold on to the car then, but his teammate of Majacko is going to go down the inside uh, after KB07 nearly loses it coming out of uh, uh, Anthony Noves then. That was a close one there. And speaking of close ones, Scornzy is, uh, was temporarily within about four tenths back to Dusty. We'll have to see if any move can be made. Now, see, this is the thing. We, we've, we've mentioned time and time again how Scornzy has been very uh, tentative to taking his opportunities uh, when they're given to him. And I, I tell you what, if I were him, I'd have to realize that there really is no time left in the season to be cautious. You really have to start uh, putting in the work as last week out at Imola, he did have the DNF uh, in the uh, proper Grand Prix. So he really is in quite the uh, points hole at the moment. He needs to be a little gutsy here. Looks like Scavney pulling off down to the inside of Knuckles. Does perhaps Scavney have wing damage? That might be what it is. As I wouldn't have given that position up so easily. Let's see. Yeah, locked up uh, going through the uh, Newville chicane as well, which people don't seem to realize as much as that. When you lose that front wing, not only do you lose cornering ability, you do lose uh, braking ability as well. As Scavney then uh, having to hold on to the car once more as he goes through to back. Uh, making his way now through swimming pool. He is going to let Nikki 64 go by. Uh, he's not had enough time to let the McLaren of Slayer eyes go by, although I'm assuming he's going to do that too. But not before uh, they get into Raskas. 
Does he make his way into the pit, Scavenny? Yes, he does. Meanwhile, at the top of the grid, here's Scornzy. He is within three tenths of a second on Dusty Lusky. Smith Pell has just picked up 10 seconds for corner cutting. Uh, uh, Smith Pell, that being, that is the Alpine of Smith Pell. Where has he picked that up? Is that going through? Uh, the Newville chicane, that's probably what it is. Scornzy looked to the outside there briefly on Dusty Lusky, well, didn't have enough room to make it happen, although he really is right there. But see, this is the problem. When you follow closely at Monaco like this, we've seen it a couple times already, the driver in front of you is not exactly, uh, he, he's not exactly safe for making mistakes. Say Dusty Lusky starts spinning and gets out of control, Scornzy's gonna be caught up right in that. The rain's still falling here in Monaco. Only just, it looks like we might have start having the track dry up very shortly, as I think now we can officially say the rain has stopped falling. But, uh, as you can see, the track is not dry yet, so uh, it'll be crucial to see what Jonathan Dunk does. He has stayed out another lap. As you can see, the rain uh, has not has stopped falling completely. Jonathan Dunk uh, still, out, still on track. He is the leader of the Grand Prix, 121.595. Uh, is his fastest lap so far, uh, the fastest lap of the race as well. Light work behind by six seconds. Dusty third, Scornzy fourth. And the two Ferrari drivers, they're battling it out as well. Meanwhile, Lancey's in this as well. Lancey's in quite the struggle here. He's got two Ferraris behind him. A-Dub, he's within about five tenths on Slayer Eyes, although I believe Slayer Eyes just got a bit slow uh, going out of swimming pool then. A-Dub's gonna look around the left-hand side. Uh, nothing there at this moment in time, although you can see A-Dub really pressuring Slayer Eyes here. When I believe he's a little bit slow getting onto the throttle, that's not helped him out. Scornzy back to Dusty Lusky, heading through the hairpin. It looks like now the track really in position to perhaps use the dry tires. We'll have to see, again, what the leader of Jonathan Dunk chooses to do. Uh, as right now, it definitely looks ripe for the dry tires. So, this is where positions are gained and lost, is on tire strategy. As we've mentioned before, does Jonathan Dunk come in now, or does he wait? Does anyone else behind him, perhaps, w do they wait? I mean, this is so interesting to see. Jonathan Dunk making his way uh, towards the pit section now, uh, out of Raskas. Does he pit? No, he doesn't. How about light work? Does he pit after going through Raskas? No, he doesn't. Dusty Lusky, what about him? He's got Scornzy in pursuit as well. Scornzy had a thought, but didn't do it. Lancey, he's going through Raskas next. Still, nobody choosing to pit. This is quite odd. El Majaco, does he pit? No, he doesn't. So it looks like nobody yet is choosing to take the risk of pitting for the soft tires. Uh oh, I say softs, it might be the hards as well. Granted, the hards are going to be absolute icicles to drive on uh, in the early days here. Mind you, the mediums will go uh, between 25 and 30 laps, so maybe can they stick it out another two laps and then get to the end on the mediums? Is that probably what they're hoping for? That might be the case. We're assuming DRS is going to be enabled probably next time by, considering how dry the track has gotten. Although it doesn't look like DRS is going to make that much of a difference. In the pits now comes Ray Lobo, that being in the Williams. He's currently a bit far back in the 16th. Does he pit? Oh, and he's putting on another set of mediums plus the front wing change. I don't think that was uh, meant to happen then. Looks like Slayerized still. Hunting down Nikki 64 and the Mercedes ahead. A-Dub right behind Slayerized here. As you can see, uh, the laps getting faster, the braking performance getting better, uh, the cornering getting better, and the speeds getting higher. Around the outside then looks A-Dub. He almost had it there on Slayerized. That was a great try. Uh, I'll give him that. He almost, he, he really got quite close then, didn't he? Uh, but to no avail. Once again, let's go ahead and see what the leaders do. Jonathan Dunk has stayed out again. So is Lightwork, so is Dusty, so is Scornzy, and next up is Lancey. Let's see what he does. It really looks to see like there is a dry groove on the track, but nobody in the uh, position to take that chance at this moment in time. That, I gotta say, quite odd. Once again, I think they're probably just staying out for the medium tires, trying to last, you know, the two laps or so uh, on the intermediates while the track is still taking its time to dry out. I don't necessarily know if it's true in this game, but obviously if you're a real-life F1 fan, you know that uh, these intermediate tires, once they start to get onto a dry circuit, uh, from the wet to the dry, once they start to uh, wear out the tires, they make some sort of unbelievably grippy, soft compound tire. Uh, not necessarily by design, but that is what happens. I don't know if that uh, is true necessarily in the game. But you can really start to see Scornzy picking up the pace now. Ray Lobo, three-second time penalty, multiple warnings. So within five tenths on Dusty Lusky, although he's, he's got really no opportunity of being able to overtake him so far, uh, heading through the new Wilshire Cane. A little bit of contact there to the gearbox of the Mercedes ahead, but nothing there. It looks like, see, this part of the track here still looks wet, where pretty much anywhere through sector one and two looks like there is a dry line going through the track. 
Jonathan Dunk has stayed out again, so I'm assuming is light work. Let's see what he does. Ninth lap of the Grand Prix, so I would go ahead and assume that we're going to be starting to see drivers come in probably this next time by. It really is just the spray. That's the only thing holding up, holding him up here. I mean, if you go up, you can definitely see the left side of the circuit actually dry. You can see the racing line dry, uh, where anything off the racing line still is wet. So if you have a yellow flag somewhere, Tweezer uh, has retired from the session, and he is, that's actually passed. Uh, that, that is going towards the hairpin then. That is the Williams, as he makes his way now. Can we actually get a good glimpse at, uh, of what's happened? So he's gone straight on uh, after turn number uh, five here. He's gone into that runoff area, and that's not helped him whatsoever. Still that yellow flag over in sector two. That is being for uh, Tweezer, naturally. Let's see here, Lightwork. He's, oh, Lightwork's actually had to go across the chicane then, and he's picked up five seconds. Now, that wasn't his fault. He saw uh, that the, uh, I believe, was that Smith Pell. It's actually hit the barrier. Yeah, he's hit the Armco barrier on his way into the corner. And, and naturally, he's now blocking the circuit, as you can see. And, and Lightwork, absolutely in his own right, deserves to have that penalty taken off, as he could do absolutely nothing to avoid uh, the car that had d DNF'd in front of him. And naturally, in a league where there's no ghosting, uh, you would have to go across the chain to avoid it. Obviously, in this league, there is ghosting. But I think Lightwork absolutely deserves to have that penalty taken off, and he probably will. Uh, Although, you know, his next pit stop is, is going to eradicate it anyways. Assuming they wouldn't have had to make another pit stop, he would have absolutely gotten that penalty taken off, but that won't be the case. Scornzy still with it about three tenths back to Dusty Lusky. Now, Dusty Lusky surely is in an unbelievably uncomfortable position at this moment in time. He's had an, an entirely white rear view mirror since the off, and somehow he's coping with that pressure really quite well. Once again, you have El Majaco hunting down Lancey here for the fifth spot. You have KB07 battling his teammate, and behind him is, well, that's the Red Bull, I believe, uh, of either Scavney or TW Dutchman, whoever it is, and he was right up to that gearbox. Now, once again, ghosting is on, so you won't have to worry about it, but that surely is quite uncomfortable to see uh, a, a driver that's a, uh, that's a lap down pulling up your mirrors like that. Jonathan Dunk stays out again. What does light work do? This is the interesting bit here. Does he come in? The track really does look dry now. No, he stays out another lap. Dusty Lusky, he's just had a bit of a slide, I believe, uh, coming out of swimming pool then. As Scornzy, he might have a look for an overtake here, as it looks like both Dusty Lusky and Scornzy on their way in. So where Jonathan Duncan Lightwork might be missing out here. Scornzy comes in, Lancey comes in, KB, uh, Elma Jacko comes in, KB decides to stay out. This is quite bold. Medium tires going on naturally. Unless you're Elma Jacko, who fits the hards. That, I gotta say, seems like an absolute mistake then. Hard tires for anyone who's pit, minus that, of, of Shariah and TDV Dutchman. I 100% un, I believe that the medium tires would have been the right, call, the, the, uh, the right choice to go on then. Because those medium tires could go between 25 and 30 laps, and that would have taken you the rest of the way easily. Unless perhaps have the tire ages changed. But now this is quite interesting. Does, I, I mean, I would have absolutely expected Scornsy to go on the mediums then. I wouldn't have seen why he didn't. Am I just actually quite wrong and that's just how it is? Uh, Jonathan Dunk on his way into the pits, surely he's gonna be fitting the hards. Uh, Lightwork stays out another lap. That one there is bold. As you can see, that track is quite dry now. Uh, unless he knows something that we don't, he should have absolutely come in. But he has chosen not to, as he does set the fastest lap, however. 119-213. Uh, Jonathan Dunk, he does come out on the hards. KB07, he's finally making his way in, although uh, I think he's made the right choice here. He's not going to lose too many positions, uh, considering uh, currently... Oh, he's making a front wing change as well. I, that one I didn't expect. I, I Huh quite bold. DRS enabled now, finally. So it looks like light work uh, maybe has stayed out a minute too long. Uh, let's see the, the tires, uh, how they're comparing. I, I tell you what, light work still 11 seconds and counting over Jonathan Dunk. It's actually climbing. It's staying between 11.6 to 11.7 quite considerably here. 
Look at it again now. It's up to 12 now. A 12 second gap. I tell you what, light work might just have the fastest tire on the grid at the moment. He's not decided to come in just yet. Let's see if he does this lap. I would assume he's gonna have to. There's, there's absolutely no way he could stay out anymore. And he finally decides to come in. Uh, that is the Aston Martin then of Lightwork, who by the way does have uh, that five second time penalty for having to avoid uh, Smith Pell's DNF at the Newville chicane. Uh, something that wasn't his fault whatsoever. But now look, the crew is gonna have to wait that five seconds before they can start working on the car. This is gonna be an eight second stop here minus uh, any time it takes to get out of the pit lane. So he is definitely at a severe advantage is that Aston Martin. It looks like, oh, has a car just gone off then? Going through Raska, uh, going out of Anthony Noakes, and it is Ray Lobo, uh, who has spun around then. And that is not good for him. That is right in the middle of the pack then. Dry Coleslaw, uh, Scornsey then setting the fast lap, 116-138. Light work actually comes out well ahead then of Scornsey, so he's taking the medium tires, which I would have done, it. oh, and he's really smacked the wall then. Oh, and I tell you what, I think he may have been struggling to get the tires up to temperature, that is light work. And he is now missing the end plate on the right front side. And he is now losing positions here. Goodness, and that was going through Massonet then. And he has absolutely smacked the right-hand side wall going up through Massonet, and now is at a huge disadvantage. Speaking of disadvantage, Scornsey currently second. Uh, he's down to Jonathan Dunk by 15 seconds. Crucially, however, Elma Jacko's still fifth. Of course, will be moved up to fourth uh, once Lightwork comes in uh, after, his, uh, after his wing change that we're going to go ahead and assume that he makes. But it is Jonathan Dunk, who at this moment of time dominating uh, the Monaco Grand Prix here in the Coleslaw Cup, round number 10 of the season. Is there anybody relatively close on track? We do have Lancey, and it looks like KB07, uh, in his attempt to do an overcut here, uh, has overtaken the Aston Martin then of Lancey. Uh, Scornsey fast slap 114.454. And those times are only going to come down since then. It looks like Lightwork is on his way into the pits. Closest battle on track currently, Lancey to KB07. It's less than a second. Elma Jacko's been promoted up to fourth. He's had himself, now despite his qualifying position, he's up five spots. A-Dub up ten. And it looks like we've had an incident towards the back. It is the Mercedes Nikki 64 who has spun it round. Uh, and thankfully, he's done it prior to the pit entry then. So we can come back in, fix that front wing. And that, that was nearly catastrophic. As had he had to have made another trip around the circuit with a broken front wing. That would have been so detrimental then to the Mercedes. Uh, he is getting that front wing change, and he is down to 15th. Jonathan Dunk fastest lap, 114 flat nearly. A-Dub up to 10th after starting dead last 20th. Ooh, has, have we just witnessed an overtake back there? I think we did. Our, uh, I believe that's uh, Ray Lobo then. That was, I, I tell you what, that nearly looked to be an amazing move then, but it, it wasn't that way. Now here's light work. Uh, or Mopower Cowboy, rather, as TDB Dutchman, he's retired, and that is going through uh, the swimming pool section of the track then. That, I gotta say, we did not expect. Does anybody have a good camera shot of that? Mopower Cowboy, does he? A-Dub, does he? And it looks like it's a very Daniel Ricardo-esque uh, DNF then, as he has blocked straight across the track. You see the drivers having to really be cautious, as the car doesn't look ghosted on screen, but it actually is, and driver's really having to slam the brakes there, as the car really quite in a blind section of the track. I don't know why the safety cars are broken here in Monaco, but they absolutely are. As you can see, that probably should have been a safety car there, uh, but it hasn't been. Lancey, seven tenths of a second back to KB07 for the fifth spot. These two have been battling pretty much the whole day so far. Not, ne not necessarily a lot of overtaking, but, you know, it's been fun to at least watch them close together. Uh, I tell you what, KB07 not exactly had the best trip through the Newville chicane then. He's gone out uh, really slow, exiting the corner. I tell you what, Lancey's just gone quite slow as well. He really seems to have struggled with the car there, uh, going out of to back. It almost looks like he has understeer at this moment in time, as you can see. Yeah, I'd honestly... The car kind of looks a handful there for the Aston Martin driver. DRS in his favor, uh, although naturally that's not going to help all that much, but, you know, one can dream. That car looks quite a handful right now, is that Aston Martin? At least through a sector 
t the end of Sector 2 through Sector 3. It looks like it's quite the struggle to drive at this moment in time. KB07, let's see him. As uh, Lightwork fastest lap, one something. Scavenging three second time penalty, multiple warnings. Lap 16 of 39, we're nearly halfway there. Once again, we do not necessarily expect another round of pit stops, considering that uh, everyone put on the hards after coming in from the intermediates at the beginning of the lap. So any other pit stops from here on out uh, is probably going to be due to wing changes, unless perhaps we have the odd chance of the safety car. Now, as we were just saying, the safety car is properly broken here at Monaco. We don't really expect that to happen. As, as you just saw, uh, the Red Bull of TDB Dutchman be perpendicular across the circuit, uh, and that didn't bring out the safety car. So, really, we have no idea. Still seven tenths of a second, though, between the Aston Martin of Lancey and the Ferrari of KB07. So far, yet again, Ferrari having that better day uh, than Alpha Tauri in second place. Alpha Tauri's had himself a great day, dog. He is up 10. Uh, but yet again, it looks like the Alpha Tauri's might just come up shy of the Ferraris yet again. That team has had very many instances so far this season where they genuinely look, genuinely look to see like they were going to have a better outing than the Ferrari team until the very end of the race where suddenly something had happened. Well, speaking of something happening, here's Lightwork. He's going to go up the inside of Knuckles going through Beau Rivage. Hits, hits the inside wall then. Has he lost his front wing? No, he hasn't. The Aston Martin then of Lightwork, a brilliant overtake there on Knuckles going up through Beau Rivage. Unbelievably tricky part of the circuit to make an overtake, and he's just done that. He has hit the wall as well, so I'm surprised his front wing isn't scattered across the track, but, well, he, he's done it, and he's made it happen. Six tenths of a second between Mopala Cowboy and Knuckles. Knuckles actually going off to the inside of the circuit there, and I, perhaps as he just maybe had a slow getaway coming out of uh, Portier. I don't know what the case is, but Mopower Cowboy has gotten around the left side of him. Oh, and a yellow flag. It looks like perhaps has Nikki 64 gone off. Yes, he has, and that is on the pit straight. Oh, good God. I, I understand ghosting's on, but Jesus, he's almost gone right into the path then uh, of, of the oncoming drivers as he finally gets the car turned around there. Wow, that one nearly ended so, so poorly. Nikki 64, three seconds, multiple warnings. I believe that's going across... Uh, San Devot there. Down the hill, El Majaco, as we can see. Lancey looks to have fallen out of uh, pace here with the Ferrari ahead of him. That battle has been quite close prior to this point. It's, it's now just under a second and a half. Now, if you, if you sincerely ask me, this section of the track should not... I, I mean, this new little chicane right here needs to be taken out, if you ask me. That, this should just be completely eliminated, and this should be all one DRS zone, and maybe, just maybe, I mean, I think you could even expand the harbor there, really, and make kind of a flowing left-handed turn. Because, I mean, seriously, how this track will be on the calendar until 2025 makes no sense to me. I mean, there's been some good races here, but there hasn't been good racing. Hey. If there's been overtakes, if there's been, you know, crashes, I mean, if there's been memorable races, it's been for crashes. It's not been for overtaking. I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. We just had Lightwork overtake Mokawa Cowboy, not uh, uh, Knuckles, not long ago. And I mean, that's just one pass. Average Monaco enjoyer would say that's pretty okay for one race weekend. As we have a yellow flag here. Oh, and that's quite the amount of uh, front wing scattered across the circuit there, as it is the Williams in front. Oh, and the, uh, that is the Mercedes, Nikki 64 and Ray Lobo, I believe both, leaving behind some wing there, as you see these three cars going their way through the hairpin now. Not exactly battling, as, uh, well, Ray Lobo's down by, I think, at least two laps here. Nikki 64 is down, well, he's not down an lap. Well, actually, let's see, what is the gap back to the leader, so... Well, how is A-Dub down by a minute. Nikki 64 is down by under a minute. That doesn't quite make any sense. It looks like, yeah, Williams is getting out of the way there. It does look like, however, uh, we've got the Mercedes, Nikki 64. He's going off again, uh, this time coming out of, uh, coming out of Louis Chiron then. Trying to get the car back up to speed here. Looks like VTech now is within a second of A-Dub ahead. 
closest battle we've had for about five laps here. We're officially halfway through uh, this Monaco Grand Prix. Mickey 64 and Ray Lobo both into the pits now. It looks like the two McLaren teammates, Mickey 64 retiring from the session there. It looks like the two McLaren teammates uh, were quite close there for, for a moment and, and they've fallen out uh, once again. Uh, speaking of falling out, VTech no longer within uh, one second of ADUB ahead. And I, I believe he did not have DRS that last time by. That marks a considerable amount of laps since we've had DRS. But he is still right there. Now, if A-Dub were to make a mistake, I, I tell you what, VTech uh, would be right on top of it uh, to make something happen. So, we'll have to wait and see. Seven tenths of a second and closing. It looks like KB07 has found his way back to his teammate, El Majaco, for that fourth spot. Now, Dun oh, KB has had himself a really big slide there. Uh, did well to hold on to it, but uh, in the moment of excitement I had, uh, in the prospect of perhaps two teammates battling it out here, uh, that has not come to fruition. As these guys make their way through the Newville chicane, it looks like uh, both drivers kind of struggled through it. Uh, however, VTech's gotten the better go of it. He's within seven tenths of a second. Uh, somehow, an A dub ahead. Got to see. Now, I tell you what, VTech has gained a considerable amount of time in the last couple of laps. Where is A dub losing out? Uh, back to the Alfa Romeo there for that uh, tenth spot. We'll have to see. DRS open here, five tenths of a second. I highly doubt that move is going to be made into Sandovat. Vite up through uh, Massine now. It looks like oh, Scavney has had himself a bit of a go there. He has lost uh, the entirety of the front wing on that Red Bull, and that is not what they needed. Uh, Slayer Eyes, mind you, on his way in. That is uh, one of the McLarens. Not long ago was quite close to his teammate as uh, VTech and A-Dub making their way down towards the hairpin now. Does VTech probably have anything? Uh, he did go quite deep into that corner, almost like he was having a look, uh, and he, he's not at the end of the day. Uh, now going through Portier, still six tenths of a second there. KB07, mind you, he's within about seven and a half to his teammate at El Majaco. Uh, boy, if those two were to somehow get in a skirmish here, that would be the most unbelievable thing we've seen so far this season. And mind you, we've had two races decided uh, by last lap safety car ending. So, that, I gotta say, uh, <laughs> that's, that speaks a lot there. But here's VTech once more. Now within three tenths to the Alpha Tower in front. Does he perhaps have anything for A-Dub here? It looks like pretty much anywhere through Sector 1, A-Dub's got a match, but VTech uh, has a match anywhere else on the circuit. And really, you're only overtaking opportunities through Sector 1, uh, it has to be said. So A-Dub's got to find, uh, VTech's rather, has got to find some pace. Oh, and it looks like Scavenny's just going off. And that there, going through, uh, that is uh, coming out of Casino. And Lancey's retired from the session as well. That being, oh man, and this is right in the circuit then, as you can see. Uh, had to run over debris to get out of the way. But uh, Lancey has gone off, that being through the new Okay, We have two different DNF cars on track and neither of them have been able to bring out the safety car. Minus that, uh, that has been a bit of a conundrum getting around uh, Scavney's dead body then. As Lancey leaves the session, and yet again, no uh, safety car apparently necessary in the eyes of Fern Maylander and the uh, FIA team. It is what it is. However, uh, here now is VTAC. Really quite close then to Adub. Could he perhaps have something here going into back? Well, I tell you what, he almost had a look. Two, two tenths of a second to gap. A-Dub has to be very, very uncomfortable here, knowing there's a car hungry to overtake him. I think, honestly, going out of perhaps Raskas and uh, Anthony Noggs is where A-Dub is gaining back his time, as VTech is really quite close to him, the entirety of the circuit, and then suddenly he's just not anymore. Five tenths of a second. Uh, and, I mean, that was within two tenths not long ago. Something, uh, somewhere within that third sector, VTech is losing his time, and then it's struggling to get it back. Uh, through the first half of the circuits. Five tenths of a second the gap as they make their way through uh, through Massine into Casino on his teammate of El Majaco as they make their way out of swimming pool into uh, Raskas and Anthony Noggs now. Coming up upon 10 laps to go and only a few laps time. Well, that's not even true. There's 39 laps in this Grand Prix. About 15 to go here and about once we get to 26 and Jonathan Dunk's still on 24 naturally. KB07, he's, he's suddenly quite close to his teammate here. Three tenths of a second. Uh, VTech, mind you, has fallen out outside of nearly a second and a half back to Adub. So somewhere VTech has made a hyenas mistake uh, and has now lost a lot of time. Although, once again, clawing it back. Now, again, where exactly VTech is losing that time 
uh, back to Adub is quite confusing, and, and where Adub is losing that time right back. Five tenths of a second or less between the two Ferraris here. I would highly doubt that KB07 will make any sort of unbelievable attempt here on El Majaco. His teammate, by the way, championship leader, who really cannot afford to lose out on any more points, he's going to lose out on today. Mind you, the gap from first to second is seven points. The gap from second to uh, fourth. Uh, well, I don't know it off the top of my head. Let me go ahead and look. <laughs> so, fourth to fifth is three points. From second, from second to fourth, 23 to 15. So Alma Jacko losing out. Pretty solid chunk of points there, uh, considering that pretty much every track from here on out, uh, Stormzy really could do do a damage. It looks like Lightworks on his way in. Uh, I believe the mediums are going to be getting ready here. Perhaps a front wing. Yes, a front wing as well for the Aston Martin of NFS Lightworks. Take a look now at the remaining uh, races on calendar here. So we're here at Monaco. Next week we, we're off to Monza, the second uh, Italian stint of the year. Uh, and then Hungary for the... Uh, Hungary the round after. And then Great Britain, uh, the penultimate round of the season, a sprint race weekend. And then finally Spa Francochamps to end off uh, the Coleslaw Cup campaign. That is quite interesting. Speaking of quite interesting, VTech nearly had a lunge there at A-Dub. And VTech oh, then picks up three seconds. Uh, for exceeding track limits, that going across the initial curb uh, into uh, Sandovant there. Three tenths of a second, KB back to his teammate of El Majaco. This now as they exit swimming pool. Does KB have anything here? I, I don't know. Do does he perhaps get gutsy over his teammate? Mind you, there's still some unfinished business between these two. They had quite the, uh, quite the row last week uh, at Imola where they overtook each other many times during the Grand Prix. Oftentimes, what I'd say hindered both drivers' progress. Elma Jacko ended up finishing P11 that race. Uh, luckily, in his favor, Scornzi did DNF. Still within three tenths of a second. Vitek. Oh, Adob has had himself quite uh, the mistake then, as Vitek managed to get around that right-hand side of the. Oh, and look at this! Vitek has immediately gone and lost it. Oh, and he's lost a bit of the front wing as well. He had that position over A-Dub, finally, after all the battling that he did. And he's gone and lost it again. And now grumpy old Catman getting around the left-hand side of the Alfa Romeo there. We're going to have to assume uh, that VTEC comes into the pits. Yes, he does. And unfortunately for VTEC, who was, was having himself quite a pretty solid display so far, as A-Dub replacing the front wing as well. So the two drivers that were previously just battling for position there, uh, battling to see who gets out of the pits first after making wing changes. And it looks like it will be A-Dub. On his way in as well, I believe. Uh, Ray Lobo coming in. Very interesting turn of events there uh, between those two drivers. And uh, once again, KB07 trying to claw within reach his teammate of El Majaco as they now uh, make their way through San Deva. NFS Lightwork, three second time penalty for multiple warnings. Uh, that's actually quite. Where is he picked that up? Is that going. Uh, it must be through the Newville chicane. That, I believe, will put him back up to three. Let's see the penalties here. Mo Power Cowboys at six. Lightworks at three. Knuckles at three. Vtex at three. Ray Lobo's at three. So it looks like uh, bad things in life come in threes, I guess. That's uh, Lightwork fastest lap, 112, 526. Yellow flag somewhere. Oh, well, hang on just a minute. Is that who I think it is? No, it's actually not. Knuckles near about gave me a heart attack there as he has completely lost his front wing. But goodness gracious, I saw an Alfa Romeo in front of him, and uh, which I believe is Jonathan Dunk. It is anyways, and I thought Scornzi was right there. Uh, as it turns out Scornzi is over 10 seconds behind, but goodness gracious, that nearly. I mean, we almost just had an apocalyptic meltdown then. That's KB07, jeez, he's right next to that right rear tire of his teammate there, uh, going through Raskas. DRS in his favor. up through Massonet now, the two Ferraris. Best wishes to uh, 
Dace, who I believe has actually just lost his grandfather. That's uh, that's quite sad, actually, as I'm just looking through uh, messages on an additional Discord. Uh, prayers up for Dace and his family. Um, KBO7, this moment in time. Still half a second behind Majako, but you gotta think that. Maybe, perhaps, is this pressure uh, hindering El Majako? Mind you, he's 15 seconds behind Dusty Lusky in third. He's had absolutely no challenge for the top three whatsoever today. Uh, and that's no that's no dig at him, really. That's just the fact of the matter is that he has been, uh, ever since starting, you know, ninth, you're not really going to be able uh, to claw your way back that quickly. He spent the whole day uh, sparring with his teammate of KB07. Now, mind you, KB hasn't made any uh, legitimate maneuvers then at Machaco, although I, I tell you what, one mistake could mean absolute tragedy uh, for El Majaco. Looks like Scornzy still 13 seconds behind that of Jonathan Dunk. Next time by will mark 10 laps to go. Looks like A-Dub, he's within a couple of tenths then on Shariah Coleslaw, this heading down into the hairpin. I tell you what, he nearly had that look around the right hand side, and he's not been able to make that happen. Still has the Alpine right in the sights here, let's see. Does he stay within the slipstream then of Shariah? Shariah getting away, I have to say, much better uh, than the Alphatari. Let's see how they go down into the Newville chicane, and I'm afraid nothing's going to happen just yet. I believe he temporarily went down in the neutral there to aid him. That was quite scary for a second. And as well, the two McLarens were battling it out once again there momentarily. Trumpy old Catman has since then fallen outside uh, of a second behind his teammate, second and a half. VTech here battling Pinnacles perhaps for the uh, 12th spot. He's within a couple of tenths. Well, this also gives us a pretty good camera angle of the two Ferraris battling for position still. <laughs> Look at the bright sides. <laughs> Ten laps to go in this Grand Prix. Alfa Romeo v -Tech still trying to hunt down Knuckles. A-Dub uh, battling it out here with Shariah Coleslaw. These two uh, quite in uh, close quarters here. Does A-Dub perhaps have anything for the Alpine ahead of him? As they head now down towards, uh, heading towards uh, the uh, Hotel Hairpin. Once again, going down to the neutral there was A-Dub. I don't, I don't know if that's there. I believe A-Dub may have actually just hit the wall. As, uh, once again, you get the Ferraris battling in and behind. Oh, that looked quite close there for a second. Hang on, let's just go along with that. That got quite close there for a second, uh, going through Portier. So once again, KB07 still right there on Elma Jacko. And I tell you what, this, again, is not helping Elma Jacko. He is now losing three seconds. Uh, well, he's lost three seconds over the past two laps that Dusty Lusky. And I believe, really, the pressure of having his teammate behind him, that's not helping. Anytime you get a driver like that who's filling up your mirrors on either side, that is one of the more detrimental things that you can have. And speaking of detrimental things, the, the Haas there of Knuckles, uh, I mean, granted he's ghosted, but goodness me, if I was a driver in, in KB07 shoes, I would have absolutely had a code brown to spend to see a back marker and try to go up the inside. That has got to be uh, quite stressful then. So one more time, Jonathan Dunk has had it all to himself all day long. The next car in line is Scornzy, the Haas. 15 and a half seconds behind Dusty Lusky. He's had himself such a quiet day so far. We haven't mentioned him so much, uh, although he is having a brilliant outing in third. Uh, El Majaco fourth, KB05 in fifth. Now these two still battling it out all day pretty much so far. Lightwork 20 seconds behind them in sixth. Mopow another 12 behind Lightwork. 24 behind him is Slayer Eyes. Five behind him is uh, Grumpy Old Catman. 10 behind him is Shariah. And finally, A-Dub. Uh, about five tenths of a second back to Shariah Coleslaw, uh, who now has the Ferraris entering in uh, on their battle for position. Vitek and Knuckles uh, in this as well. Now, mind you, Knuckles has a great view of the two Ferraris ahead. I, I tell you what, Knuckles might be on the soft tire right now. He does look to have matched the pace of the two Ferraris ahead. As they now go through. Look at this! Knuckles just going straight through! And Majako, I tell you what, as Majako just hit the wall there, uh, going through uh, Raskas, it certainly looked like he has, as he was out quite wide. And if the game would, good God, get me a shot of his front wing. No, he hasn't lost any bits, but goodness gracious, I tell you what, we almost witnessed a catastrophe there for the two Ferraris as we were along uh, with the, the Haas of Knuckles. That, I, I tell you what, that got scary right quickly as A-Dub, oh my goodness, he almost completely plowed into that wall. 
uh, trying to battle Shariah Kosla whilst also uh, not being tempted to get in the way of the Ferraris behind him. Lanty once again, Knuckles has a great view of the two Ferraris ahead. Well, I guess we'll stick along with him for a bit, being our own personal camera car at this moment in time to pass. Towards the new Bill Shikane, Shariah Kosla, uh, three second time penalty for multiple warnings there. You can see the different lines. It's actually a great shot there, looking at the different lines that people are taking uh, through that new Bill Chicane, as now it looks like KBO7 has fallen about seven tenths of a second behind El Majaco. Meanwhile, VTech, uh, he's with him. A couple of tenths on Knuckles ahead now. This is the part I wonder, are they ghosted to everyone, including themselves? Oh, as VTech has really hit the inside of the wall there, going through Raskas, uh, and now he's fallen off the pace a little bit. But suppose Knuckles gets an, gets an overtake attempt to A-Dub here. Can he do it while, whilst ghosted? I, I highly doubt that's the case, but that'd be quite interesting. Uh, an interesting flaw as well. Speaking of which, when did A-Dub get around Knuckles? Are we just noticing that now? I mean, A-Dub was ahead. I, I know he did eventually let the two Ferraris pass. That must be why I'm confused at this moment in time. Because suddenly A-Dub, uh, who by the way, look at the training taking place in the right front tire uh, on that Alpha Tari. He's got the two Ferraris ahead of him. It's eight tenths of a second between the two Ferrari teammates. As uh, A-Dub's got about a half second back to Knuckles behind. Alma Jacko now nearly 20 seconds outside of Dusty Lusty for third. That is now officially the statistic, 20 and a tenth. Still three tenths of a second between the Ferrari teammates. And unfortunately, a lot of times for, a lot of time for things to go wrong and I believe go wrong, they may have just, as I think, perhaps, uh, has KB07 hit that wall going out of swimming pool. It's obviously we're not going to be able to tell if he has front wing damage from here. Perhaps does he have a good shot uh, going through send of Va? No, you can't really see it, can you? I think KB07 definitely got quite close to that wall on the outside of swimming pool. He hasn't done in the front wing, thankfully for him, but that was quite close indeed. Four tenths of a second between the two Ferraris ahead. Down through the hotel, they uh, down through the hairpin they go now as we accidentally go along with Shariah there. Gonna have to start coming up with new adjectives. To oh, grumpy old Catman is suddenly DNF'd, and that is going through. The new village, oh my god, he is perpendicular across the circuit there. Wow, that, I gotta say, we did not expect. That almost opened the door there for KB07. He is now slow the car down and seeing that the, uh, the DNF car ahead of him. Has he now perhaps opened the door for KB07? KB hitting the inside wall there, going through Raskas. DRS obviously going to be in his favor here, but to no avail. As look at the getaway that El Majaco has managed to get going into Sandoval. That has absolutely blown KB out of the water. The Knuckles, he's still within three tenths on A-Dub behind. A-Dub still has a great shot of the two Ferraris ahead, which we're going to continue to watch, naturally. A VTech, by the way, he is within a, a couple of tenths now on Knuckles. Uh, mind you, both these guys sitting on three-second time penalty, so, over, oh, so any overtakes uh, that they may happen over A-Dub, it's not going to mean anything. Head down through the hairpin now. Like still ahead. It's quite confusing, really, because I I'm assuming that really those hard tires have to be nearing the end of their lives. As uh, Mopal Cowboys actually just come in, going to put on a set of softs. We look and see the graining. You can see the graining on the uh, front tires there uh, of KB07, and for the rear tires on Majaco, for that matter, as well. These guys definitely have to be driving uh, on a quite slippery surface at this moment in time. We could perhaps see a game-changing mistake here. Speaking of game changing, A Dub was about a tenth behind. Shariah Coleslaw there almost made something happen. Oh, Shariah has really uh, spun it around there in front of A Dub, and that was going through uh, Raskas there. And Shariah is on his way into the pits. And unfortunately, A Dub didn't really have anywhere to go, and he's gone into the back end of the uh, of the Alpine. To his no, to none to his fault, I might add. Let's see. Uh, and then Shariah started to spin, and then A-Dub, unfortunately, just had to be right there. KB07 ignoring the tree route that's uh, going down 
uh, past Casino. Apparently, I only just found out that that's Tree Root that makes that bump. I, I really, I, this whole time, I was like, what, why are they avoiding that one very specific section of track? I mean, there's obviously a bump there, but does it matter enough to go around it? And apparently it does. Heavy over the initial uh, curb there through the chicane is KB07. It looks like uh, A-Dub under pressure here from Knuckles uh, for that ninth spot. Now, mind you, uh, it's not quite going to matter as they have a three-second time penalty. As Ray Lobo now picks up three seconds, he's up to six seconds of time penalty. Interesting statistic I'm just noticing here. Uh, Ray Lobo still has yet to overtake uh, Grumpy. He was about a minute and 48 seconds. So that's about a lap and a half back to Grumpy Old Cat. And does he... Is he still not on that lead lap? We just had a little bit of a close battle there. Mokot Cowboy trying to get around the pass of, I believe that's uh, Scornzy there who's got, yeah, it is. KB07, three tenths of a second behind his teammate. As we now start the uh, penultimate lap of the Grand Prix, at least in Jonathan Dunk's case. Ray Lobo finally overtaking a uh, DNF car there. Grumpy Old Catman is a minute and a almost two minutes behind Shariah for 12, plus the six seconds of time penalty. Knuckles, he's in a battle here with A-Dub for the ninth spot. Oh, he almost, oh God, a big contact there. Wow, and he has absolutely missed the breaking zone there as Knuckles going into the back of A-Dub. And now A-Dub's got five seconds of penalty. Oh, good. He's got five seconds of penalty for Knuckles going clean into the back of him. I tell you what, if I'm A-Dub there, I I'm protesting that to the stewards and I'm getting that penalty removed. That is a very, very unfair penalty in the case of A-Dub. That has not gone well at all for him. So his no fault either, as Jonathan Dunk going through the uh, Louis Chiron chicane one last time, uh, well, for the penultimate time, really. As he's had himself such a commanding day ever since the off. Jonathan Dunk has had this race pretty much all to himself. I mean, we saw light work made the mistake quite early on as well. And that prevented uh, light work from being able to really play a factor in this Grand Prix. As much as we really thought he was. I mean, at one point he had a 7 tenth of a second advantage over anyone else in the qualifying session as Mopal Cowboy. Oh, he's retired. And that's out of... Uh, going out of Anthony Noggs then. Has he done that on the straight? Yes, he has. Oh, and what was... Oh, and A-Dub's made a mistake as well. He is, uh, I'm afraid, being overtaken there as he's got, uh, he's got VTech in pursuit. With Jonathan Dunk making his way through the tunnel for the final time. KB07, he's still within just a little bit here of his teammate. Does he have anything for him? I believe this will be them crossing the line for the final time now. No, it is not. They have this final lap of the Grand Prix here. So unfortunate for Mopau Cowboy, but Jonathan Dunk making his way into Rascas now for the final time. Such a commanding day for the Alfa Romeo driver. Coming out of Anthony Noggs now, it will be Jonathan Dunk taking home the Monaco Grand Prix win in commanding fashion. 20 seconds behind is Scornzi, and 22 seconds behind him is Dusty Lusky. As Lightwork, three seconds for multiple warnings, that puts him up to six. And mind you, Lightwork's actually entered this battle here for fourth place as well. That's quite unfortunate for him. Scornzi coming across the line now. He will take home second place. Would have rather been fourth. Uh, would have rather have been first. However, that has put... Uh, that has taken a little bit of a chunk out of El Majaco's Constructors Championship lead there. Scornzy now, I gotta say, coming into this race, things look quite bleak. Of course, there's still a couple of rounds to go. However, things could very well change. And Scornzy may, if he keeps having results like today, he may just find himself within the championship hunt once again. Coming into the final stretch of the season.
So after it's all said and done here in Monaco, Jonathan Dunk taking a very commanding win over Scornzi in second, Dusty Lusky in third, Majaco in fourth, KBO seven fifth, sixth is, belongs to Lightwork, seventh is Slayerized, eighth A Dub, ninth V Tech, tenth Canucks, eleventh Shirai Kosla, twelfth Mo Power Cowboy, thirteenth uh, Ray Lobo, fourteenth. Uh, and everyone else behind him, Grumpy Old Catman, did not finish the Grand Prix. And next week we head to the Autodromo in Nazionale Monza uh, for the 11th round then of the Coleslaw Cup. I tell you what, it should be a very entertaining Grand Prix. Next week, next time out, Hotspot, thank you for joining us and we will see you next week.